FIA Formula One Singapore Grand Prix. First group with us now, closest to me, Oscar Piastri, then George Russell and Valtteri Bottas. Very warm welcome to you all. Uh, why don't we start with last weekend's winner, uh, Oscar? It was a phenomenal victory for you. Have you had time to celebrate properly? Uh, no, I um, got humbled very quickly the next day by George actually playing an Uno World Championship on the plane. Um, so I got brought back down to earth very quickly. Um, no, I mean it was. It has been a, a fun few days, you know. I think for myself. It's always nice when you can reflect on a race where you feel like you've done a, you know, a, a very good job and a job you can be proud of. So, um, not too much celebrating, but um, a lot of happy memories. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to try and go again this weekend. Certainly, a job you can be proud of. Just how much confidence does Baku give you coming into Singapore? Uh, it is a nice confidence boost, definitely. I think um, you know it's similar in some ways, but very, very different in, in a lot of others. Um, you know, I think we should be should be competitive this weekend. Um, and yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing I took from last weekend was just the the execution um, of, of the race from from myself and from the whole team. Um, because you know, I don't I don't think it was our most competitive track of of the year. I think we've definitely had a couple more races where we've been uh, using a bit of electricity. Um, it, we've you know, there's been a couple other races where we've been. Uh, quicker than that relative to the competition. So um, to be able to pull off a win like that when, um, you know, Ferrari especially was so competitive was um, a, a nice confidence boost, definitely. Oscar, your race engineer, Tom Stallard, said after your victory on Sunday that your rate of improvement hasn't started to level off at all yet. Um, in what areas do you think you can still develop as a racing driver? Uh, I think it's a, still a little bit everywhere, I, I would say. You know, I've not made life uh easy for myself in qualifying this year um so you know qualifying a bit better more consistently would 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 help um you know i think i've been very happy with um you know particularly the elements i showed in in baku in terms of overtaking and um and you know uh, being under pressure and stuff like that i was um was happy with um but yeah, you know, there's still going to be some tough races in the latter part of the year on tracks that I've only been to once. Um, so just trying to work on some of the weaknesses I had at those tracks last year um, is still going to be a you know a key to the end of the season. So um, you know, just a bit of bit of everything because I'm you know I feel like I'm improving uh, a lot as I go through my career, but I'm certainly not the the finished product yet. Oscar, final one from me. Can we just get your thoughts on the FIA adding a fourth DRS zone here at Marina Bay? Um, yeah, I think it's it's a good thing. Uh, I've seen where the activation is and it's quite quite early, so hopefully uh, we all get through uh, whatever the next corner is, turn 15 or, or 16, I think it is. It's a little kink. Um, okay, but um, yeah, I think for, for racing it should be better, hopefully. All right, best of luck. Thank you very much for that. George, why don't we come to you now? A great result for you on Sunday, but it wasn't a straightforward race. We're now at another street track with the same tyre compounds that we had in Baku. Um, what learnings do you have from last week that you can apply here? Yeah, first, like every race we go to at the moment, it's quite a unique circuit. Obviously, Azerbaijan was very unique in its own way. Singapore is unique in its own way, and it's, um, there's a lot of these types of tracks on the calendar and as Oscar said it's so competitive now at the front and a tenth or two can be the difference between you know front row star or p6 or seven on on the grid which is which is very exciting uh, we went really strong here last year the pace was really good in Singapore so hopefully we can continue that good performance we had here last year and um, and see where it takes us if your car performance is as good here as it was in the second stint uh, in Baku, what's possible? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were really competitive in the second stint last week. Uh, definitely surprised ourselves there, but I think now this circle with that extra DRS zone, I hope racing will be uh, slightly better. It's not going to make it worse. That's that's for sure, and um, maybe overtaking will be will be possible. So I think it will still go down to qualifying. That's going to be be key getting getting a good Saturday in and that will set you up nicely for the uh, for the race as you've already said uh, you were very competitive here last year you qualify on the front row you're going great guns until 
the moment on the on the penultimate lap. Uh, do you feel? I don't know. Do, do you feel that you have unfinished business in Singapore? No, not really. It's not really something I'm I'm thinking about. It's part of racing, part of street circuits. If you're not 100% focused every single lap, you're going to get bitten. And it was um, we had a long old race. It was on the last lap. I thought the race was kind of done. And right behind Lando, he kissed the wall. I touched the wall. And before I knew it, I'm out, out of the race. But that's how the game goes. And it's not going to change my approach one bit, how I go into this weekend. Um, you learn from things like that. How gruelling is this Grand Prix? Is is this still the toughest race for the drivers physically? I mean, for sure, it's top two with, with Qatar. Here in Qatar are um, by far the most physical races. I think here it's, it's challenging because there's so many corners, uh, pretty relentless. Slightly easier now that we've, we've got that straight um, at the back versus what it was like a few years ago. But just with the humidity or, you know, dripping in sweat as soon as you go outside, let alone when you're locked in a race car for, for two hours. Dripping with sweat, dripping with rain as well. You got caught in a rainstorm the other day, didn't you? Yes. Um, yeah, Singapore. Paddle. Yeah, it was, it, you know, paddle was obviously um, the new big thing in, in Formula One. So it was nice to take all of my, my mechanics and, and part of a team. And then it just, you know, thunder and lightning and rain came from came from nowhere. So I think it's almost every year we see in Singapore there is bad weather around so you know maybe i think that was around race time as well that was uh, 8 p.m when it poured down with rain so if that happened on sunday i'll probably mix things up a little bit right george thank you for that best of luck and valtteri let's come to you now it's been a tough couple of races for you and for salva uh, recently what what are your expectation levels coming into this race it, it definitely has been tough few races not just a couple you know um except expectations realistically i don't think it's going to be an easy weekend um, as we don't really have any any upgrades but yeah it is a bit different track to baku uh, you know different downforce level um if we can get things right we can be in, in a better shape but uh, not expecting any any magic to be honest what are the issues with the car that are highlighted around a track like this i think you know for me for sure, the overall efficiency is not there and overall performance, as we can see from the results. But um, also the car is quite a bit on the edge, let's say, uh, pretty sensitive to uh, crosswind, um, yo and roll, you know, curbing content, um, uneven surfaces, which is something we, we do have here. But um, yeah, I think in the in the last couple of months, we've re really understood the weaknesses, especially after after Zandvoort. But like I said, not an easy week in the head, but we are still here to, of course, trying to do the best. And uh, with this kind of Grand Prix, you never know. It might be the opportunity. Uh, there might be that opportunity on, on Sunday. So, uh, of course, we will keep pushing and we'll keep trying as hard as we can. There's a month long break in the calendar after this Grand Prix. Uh, what kind of possibilities does that present in terms of pushing through upgrades, understanding the car better? It's definitely going to help us. We, the, the team, whole team will have um, much more time at the factory. Um, I'll be spending some time there as well in the sim and in, in, in the meetings about the direction for the future. Um, so it's important and hopefully expecting then for the next race after this one to have some, some new bits, which is something that we re really need. Talking about the future, Alessandro Aluni Bravi said last week that a decision about the second driver for next year is going to be made imminently. Um, have you been given a, a date? Is there a deadline in your mind? Uh, not really. Like, um, yeah, we've been in, in talks now for a while with Matthias since he joined and, and Alessandro as well. Um, I can't really share much. You know, I might know a bit more than other, <laughs> other people, but uh, yeah, let's just focus for the racing this weekend. And uh, yeah, at least there's then a good sign between this and the next race to uh, continue the talks and uh, then we'll see what happens. All right. Valtteri, thank you very much. Best thank of you. luck to you this weekend. Let's now move on to the next segment and broadcasters, please. Albert. Um, Albert Farga, ESPN Latam. Question for Oscar. Uh, all drivers said that uh, they have a special feeling after the first race, uh, first Grand Prix you win. Was uh, uh, the win in Baku more special than the one in, in Hungary for you? Uh, I, I would say definitely. Um, I think just the, you know, the amount of hard work and pressure that I was under in Baku uh, made it 
much sweeter. Um, you know, I think Hungary was was definitely special. Don't get me wrong, but um, I think in any kind of race where you have to work so hard for for such a long part of the race, um, I think I said last week I, I've kind of had one race win like that in my career, and until Baku, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily my most uh, dominant performance or, or my, my best performance, but it's always the most exciting one. Um, and I think now Baku takes the, the cake for that. But um, yeah, the emotion after Baku was um, special for different reasons compared to Hungary. Thank you, Oscar. All right, next one. Yep. Rodriguez from Dazón, Spain. A question to Oscar as well. How much uh, deep in your brain are you thinking on the World Championship as a driver? Um, honestly, not much. Um, you know, I think for me, maintaining the lead in the Constructors' Championship now is by far a bigger target. Um, you know, I, I'm not out of the running for the Drivers' Championship, but I think now on average I need to score like it's it's over 10 points more per weekend than Max, I think. So, um, you know, I can try and go out and win every race, but it's now at the point where uh, you know, I need other things to start happening to, to win that. And for that to happen for seven races in a row is, um, you know, not very realistic. Um, so, of course, I'll try and go into every weekend trying to get the best result I can. And if the picture um, starts to look a bit brighter, then, then that's a bonus. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm certainly under no illusion that I'm well and truly in the fight for the championship. It's more uh, if, if some crazy stuff happens, then uh, then I'll be there to, to work my way into the fight. Laurent Thank Dupin you. from Canal Plus, a question to Oscar also. You mentioned qualifying be being one of your weaknesses. Uh, it's true that from Monaco to Baku, you were always outqualified by Lando. Do you know why and what do you have to improve to, to be better on a Saturday? Uh, I, I think just consistency more than anything. I think, um, you know, I've not really had many sessions apart from maybe Baku where, uh, you know, I've been happy with my performance all the way from Q1 to the end of Q3. Um, you know, the gap has always been very small uh, in, in a lot of, in pretty much all of those races. Um, but I've always been on the on the wrong side of it. So um, I, I think it's just a matter of consistency. You know, I, I don't feel like I need to try and find extra time or or something like that. I think that my best performances are good enough to to qualify on pole position uh, in the right circumstances. But I just need to be at that level more consistently. Thank you. Dick. Diego Mejia, Fox Sports Mexico for Valtteri. Uh, Valtteri, is the fact that the car hasn't been really competitive this year further complicated things in terms of uh, securing your future with the team? I mean, we look at Franco comes in, Williams is at a good level, and suddenly he seems like a candidate for your seat. Yeah, it's how the sport is. It, I think it's not just this season, but uh, if you look at this season and, and the last season, when you're fighting towards the back, obviously it's much less visible on what you can do and what kind of performances are you having. And it's pretty much against your teammate. You can have a comparison. So for sure, it's um, yeah, you're more out there if you're fighting you know, within the points and towards the front end. That's just how it goes. So for sure, it has not been... Help with the situation, but um, but yeah, there are still people in the paddock who who know you know what the real performance is, and especially within the team, they they know how I'm performing uh, weekend to weekend, and that's the, the main thing, you know. Um, I just need the people who need to know to know how, how I'm performing, and that's what matters. Valtteri, in terms of your own performance, are you driving as well this year as you were when you were winning races with Mercedes? I feel like yes, especially uh, qualifying this year, and um, you know I haven't felt any signs of be <laughs> being worse. If anything, you you keep getting better, you know, with with experience, um, you gain more more consistency, more more confidence. Um, you can solve different issues in a, in a different way, and you can you know adapt to the car. Uh, the more time you spend in in the sport, so I feel actually I'm driving better than what I did at Mercedes, but obviously it's not uh, not that visible. Thanks for that. Any more from the broadcasters? Yes, Diego, back to you. Question to Oscar. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the rear wing on the McLaren after a few videos emerged on social media. Is it too much for us about a few millimeters? 
Uh, sorry, what was the question? Is it too much fuss about a few millimetres? Uh, Why? Well, I mean, it's legal. So, um, yeah, as long as it passes all the tests. You know, we get tested a lot um, and it, it passes. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly not the, the magic ticket or magic bullet for why we're competitive. Um, but it's, it's legal, it passes all the tests. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Nebe, everybody, it's now part two of our driver's press conference. Closest to me, Yuki Sonoda. Then we have Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll. Why don't we start with the reigning world champion, Max? I hope you're in good form. Uh, how are things? Good? All good. Yeah. E excellent. Now, look, Marina Bay was a bit of a bogey track for Red Bull last year. You qualified 11th, you finished 6th. How, how confident are you that it's going to be better this time around? Uh, well, I mean, I, I know that it's not going to be uh, our easiest weekend, just um, straight up. But, um, of course, you know, you analyze the, the race that you did last year, a few things that could have, you know, been done better. That's what we'll try to do this weekend. Um, but, yeah, I, d I don't expect it, of course, certainly to be one of our strongest weekends. But uh, I just hope that what we did in Baku already, it, it stabilized the car a bit more. That was positive. And hopefully we can we can just build on that and and see around here. I mean, of course, around here normally it's a bit more bumpy um, than uh, than Baku, but uh, yeah, hopefully the the car can take it. More bumpy than Baku, but but how much of a good testing track was Baku ahead of this race? I think it was good enough to to see a few things on on the car, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can just uh, work from there. Uh, and what were the issues last weekend that you think might repeat themselves here? Uh, just our car, uh, generally, it's not very good on bumps and curbs. And that's, of course, what you have around here. So we need to try and, yeah, try and stabilize that a bit. C can we put a number on it? I mean, you didn't quite make Q3 last year. Are you confident that you can at least do that this time around? I would hope so, yeah. But, I mean, putting a number on it, I, I don't know even where to start. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm confident that we can do a better job than, than last year. But at the same time, of course, also the competition has, uh, has improved quite a bit, uh, naturally. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, I'm definitely targeting Q3, but let's see where we end up. All right, look, there, there have been some structural changes within Red Bull that have been announced recently, w one of which involves your race engineer, GP. Um, is it a concern to you that he's taking on more responsibility? Will it somehow take away from the work that you two do together in the garage? Um, no, it doesn't. I mean, he already did more than uh, just being my race engineer anyway, so... I think, um, yeah, it's well thought about and, and basically spreading a bit the, the workload. So uh, for me, that's uh, that's fine. Look, final one from me. Can we talk about the championship? You know, there's there's seven races to go. The gap's 59 points. Are you mentally preparing for a fight to the wire? Or do you think Red Bull's going to get its mojo back when we go back to permanent racetracks like Austin? So I'm mentally preparing. I just want to uh, make the car faster and better balanced. If I manage to do that with the team, then I know that we can be very competitive again. And that's that's the only thing that I can do. I mean, there's no uh, no secret to that. You know, we just need to um, find a bit more performance and, and just make our lives a bit, uh, bit easier. All right, Max, thanks for that. Good luck this weekend. Yuki, can we come to you now? Uh, if you didn't have bad luck, you'd have no luck at all at the minute, Yuki. Um, look, wh what's your headspace coming into Singapore after a couple of frustrating races let's put it that way yeah i think um yeah I mean, anyway the races even i have good races i still able to reset so yeah i mean last two races is the, is the other things that i want to you know it's not the way i wanted to finish obviously but um yeah i mean i like singapore track so i'm trying to think positive way you know there's a uh, nice foods here exciting track uh it's gonna be anyway very tough uh, physical demanding race ahead of uh, ahead of us. So, um, yeah, I'm still motivated and, um, yeah, aiming for high. Well, you haven't done many laps with the upgrades yet due to the various issues you've had in the races, but have you done enough to know that they're a step forward and do you think they will have a positive effect on the car here? Yeah, definitely. From the, I think, new floor, what we introduced, introduced in Monza for sure it will still work here I think it's more I guess 
works well in most mostly in slow speed like uh, like we done in Azerbaijan and Singapore. I think um, still probably still need to look into it into more to Monza for example. What I had um, definitely I felt not really fully comfortable then more towards like high speed corners. So um, I'm not sure it will work for example in other tracks, but I feel definitely positive in Baku. And um, if I if you ask me, okay, now you why are you gonna choose between new floor or old floor in Monza? If I if I'm going again, I'm not sure yet to be honest. And um, probably I'll still I'll stick with the other floor maybe. Okay, can we talk teammates now? There's a there's a lot of speculation surrounding Daniel Ricciardo's future at VCarb. Um, do you get any say as to who your teammate is and? Who would you like to be your teammate going forward? No, of course not. Um, I can't. I can't say anything. I mean, I probably I don't really. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. To be honest, it's just like speculation. I don't. I'm not sure anything. I don't know anything about it. Um, so, yeah, it's up to them. It's not up to me at all. I just fo have to focus uh, to what I have. To, what I can do. Um, yeah. Can we focus on the incumbent, Daniel? What have you learned from him in the last 12 months or so? I definitely uh, respect him a lot, um, especially like the things he have is the, the, th the things I don't have. So um, especially that emotional control and like how he's able to like consistently um, being, you know, consistent to the team, I would say. I'm a bit more probably emotional, for example, like if I have a bad session, whatever. Yeah, um, for example, the quality of the feedback might be a little bit worse than usual, but he's very consistent and I think he's uh, he understood more about the car. Well, like, mm, he understood more about the probably the situation uh, and what, what things it will give positive to the teams exactly. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot of things from him and um, I'm still learning about that and um, yeah those things I'm definitely respect him all right thank you for that Yuki and Lance if we could come to you now like Yuki you've had a, a rough run in the last few races can we talk about the performance of the Aston Martin uh, since the summer break do you feel relative to the opposition it's dropped a bit um, I mean compared to the beginning of the season yes um, uh, I think we were you know comfortably the uh, best of the rest at the beginning of the year. I think the last few weekends we've um, been on the back foot, um, but looking forward to Singapore this weekend, see what we can do. And after the, I don't know what we call it, the, the collision with Yuki in, in Baku at the weekend, did the race turn into something uh, of a test session for you? And did you learn anything about the performance of the car there that can help you here? Um, yeah, I mean, it was never really going to turn into much after uh, the lap one incident. Um, unfortunately, uh, it was one of those races where, you know, just kind of hoping for something to happen. Maybe some safety cars get back in the mix. But, um, yeah, you know, we circulated. Um, and, yeah, um, unfortunate end to the weekend. But, um, like I said, looking forward to Singapore. Well, look, let, let's look at some positives now. The first time you've been in the FIA press conference since the announcement that Adrian Newey is joining the team next year. What, as, what aspect of working with Adrian are you most looking forward to? Just working with Adrian. Um, you know, he's, yeah, uh, the most successful person to... Uh, build cars in the history of the sport and um, I think it's just a very exciting chapter for Aston Martin um, you know not only Adrian but um, other you know people that are, are coming on board um, I think we're growing into a team that um, is um, you know, setting setting up for for a very bright future, and it's very exciting. Lance, as you say, the team is growing, growing rapidly. How important is it to have a, a guy like Adrian, who has what is it, forty years of experience in Formula One? How important is that to help guide all of the new people at the team? Yeah, very important. I think it's important that 
you know, we have a leader um, and we have direction on what we're doing and, um, you know, um, yeah, a vision and, and a structure that, um, you know, gets us to, to, to another level. And that's what we're in the process of doing. All right, look, final one for me, Lance. Uh, you didn't get to race here last year after the, the crash in Quali. Just how much are you looking forward to getting back out there around the Marina Bay track? Yeah, really looking forward to it. It's a great track. I always enjoy coming back here. Um, aside from lap 55, 60 of the race, I think it, it gets pretty hot in there. But um, it's a great track. It's, you know, like all the street circuits, a, a good challenge, close to the walls, um, you know, very... Um, yeah, intense in, in the cockpit. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Best of luck to you this weekend as well. Right. Let's open this to the broadcasters now. Who's who's first, please? Yeah. Hello. This is Roland Rodriguez from Dazon, Spain. A question to, to Max. Um, last weekend, uh, for the first time of the season, your teammate was was in front of you in qualifying and then in the in the race and until the crash. I would like to understand, as you guys watch all the telemetry, where he was faster or adapting better to the car at this in qualifying i don't know man uh, different setup so as soon as i went into qualifying i knew the car was <laughs> yeah i tried to optimize the car all the time and uh this time it didn't work out so i knew that i was stuck with it and then uh, you tried to optimize it but uh yeah also i mean of course my my run one in, in q3 that would have been enough for p3 in qualifying um hurt me and you start in the back of the, the top group. Um, the balance was, of course, not there in the race. Then you get stuck <clears throat> behind two cars in the middle of the race. So you kill your tires. So, you know, uh, basically everything just went wrong from, from qualifying. And, uh, yeah, because the rules, of course, don't allow you to, to change anything on the car. You're stuck with that, and that's what happened. All right. Thank you, Max. Uh, let's watch our language going forward. Uh, Crofty, you next. David Croft, Sky Sports uh, F1. Um, question to all three drivers. Uh, Lance, you've got a close relationship with Daniel Ricciardo. Max and Yuki, you have two and we're former teammates. Um, does Daniel Ricciardo deserve to stay in Formula One for next year? Max, why don't we start with you? Uh, Daniel's a great guy. I think he has proven himself as a, as a great Formula One driver. He's a, he's a friend of mine. And I think in general, always being... You know, in this kind of position is, is never nice. But um, at the other hand also, I don't think he has to feel sorry for himself. You know, um, sometimes, yeah, things maybe don't work out the way you want them in certain stages of your career, but you still have achieved a lot uh, more than anyone could ever dream of in their lives. So even if this is, let's say, the last race or whatever, you can still uh, look back at something amazing that not many people can achieve and uh, do something else maybe in life also. I mean, uh, why not? Uh, many more other race series or not. Maybe just chill back at the farm, have a lot of fun. I mean, he's a great guy. So, you know, for me, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter or not if you deserve or, uh, to be here. A lot of people deserve to be here. Some don't deserve to be here. That's life also, you know, uh, in, in uh, all kinds of sport. That's how it goes. You can yeah, I think uh, same as Max. Yeah, like I said previously, I respect him a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, we see we see how it goes, but um, I, I, I like him. Um, obviously, we all want to see him racing as well. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter if deserve or not, but you know, the thing is we want to see and, but yeah, uh, like Max said, he achieved a lot of things as well at the same time. So yeah. Uh, Let's see. Thanks, Lance. Yeah, um, I think most of it was said, you know. Um, wherever he goes, if it's in this sport or, you know, outside of it, um, whatever the future holds, just wish him all the best. All right, thank you to all three. Next one, yeah. Uh, Laurent Dupin, can I have a question for Max? Uh, McLaren is the only team having both drivers with two wins this season. Do you feel they are the strongest lineup? And do you feel that Oscar is uh, overperforming for a second year in Formula One? Uh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> uh, Oscar's doing a great job, you know, being in your second year. You're still learning a lot uh, about Formula One and in general. Just, um, yeah, he's doing a fantastic job also lately. 
She's really scoring the points also for the team. And yeah, they at the moment are very strong as a team. Um, so it's now up to us to uh, to try and make it a bit more difficult for them generally, I think. But that starts with ourselves. You know, we have to to be better and, and make the car faster. Um, yeah, and that's what we are working on. But yeah, for sure, from from Oscar's side, he's he's having a, a great uh, great run now. Thank you, Max. All right, Diego. Yeah, Diego Mejia, Fox Sports Mexico for Max. Uh, following up on Crofty's question, I mean, Daniel was a good benchmark for you in your Red Bull days uh, as teammates. Are you surprised that he hasn't been able to make quite the impact in back in the Red Bull fold? It's it's again very difficult to to comment on these things because you cannot look within the team as well, right? I mean, okay, from the outside maybe people always expect more or wish for more. Um, it's just very tough, you know, in the in the in in the midfield, I would say, you know, to uh, to have a great run of form also. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> I don't know, like it's just. You always, I guess everyone hopes for more. I think also um, himself, right? You always want to be better, naturally. Every year you want to become a better driver and sometimes that works a bit better than, than other years.